So our objectives right now, and we're going to do more, is to make a website that says, of course, hello world, right? Um, I know some, some students asked if I'm really starting at a, like a very beginner level. So I hope this proves to you that we're definitely starting at a beginner level, right? So we want a website that says, hello world. Uh, let's refresh our minds though. At the highest level, when I entered nike.com, does anyone here have intuition about what's occurring? Definitely not the details, but is there a mental model of how anything is happening? Uh, yeah, a uh, Ronald or Sarthak, either one. But I think there's just like a sends like a request or something to some DNS server. And then that server response is going to send something back to the browser. Yeah, that's actually a, a, way more detail than I was expecting. But yeah, that's awesome. So what you're talking about is like a full stack application flow. Um, but the mental model, uh, sorry, Thak, I think you have an open mic. I'm just going to mute you just in case. Um, the mental model I'd like you to have right now is that my computer is talking to Nike's computer and Nike's computer is sending it some HTML. And that's all that you need to like think about right now. So what we're gonna do is start building what Nike would send, an HTML file, right? So that's our objective, the hello world. We have HTML which is hypertext markup language. Um, and let's make an HTML file, right? So the one time I'm ever gonna use this application on my uh, computer is to bring up Notepad. And I'm gonna literally put the words, hello world. Some plain text, right? And I'm going to save this as, um, oh, I already created, let me delete this just to start fresh. Um, I'm going to call this index.html. And I'm, I'm going to change this to be uh, just no file type. Well, the file type is going to be .html. So this is going to be in documents. I'm going to save it. I, I already did this to, to prepare for lecture, but let's pretend that didn't exist, right? Um, and then let me find this in my file explorer. And here's the, the, the couple of words I wrote in Notepad. And I bring this over to Chrome, and it doesn't work, of course. I try again to open this with Chrome, that one word I just created, and look at that, we have a website, right? Um, so then the question is, well, why do we need to learn HTML? I just used regular text to make some words appear. So what's our intuition there? Why, why bother learning HTML? Um, what do you think, Renata? For screen readers, maybe, so that they can read it, the different elements on the page. Yeah, accessibility will be part of HTML for sure. Um, but the main reason is, what if we go back to Nike? Uh, I don't know if there's enough text for this to really make sense, but let me try to press Control A and copy this and then paste this in and save their site so this is just text without any of the HTML. And now this is Nike's site. So how would that be if this you were a front end developer for Nike? Do you think this would be something your team would enjoy? 
Is this a good user experience? So a block of text is awful, right? It looks awful. So the whole point of HTML Um, we surround normal text with tags uh, to let the browser know how to display it. So the whole point is that our text looks better. That's the markup part of hypertext markup language. You're marking up the words to make them look better. Obviously, the complexity has exponentially, you know, exploded uh, since this initial idea. And we do so much more with HTML. But this, this is really the mental model I want you to have. We're just making some normal text look a little nicer. Um, the hypertext part of HTML, does anyone know? That's a little bit different. Is that the yeah. link part? Yeah, so that's just a fancy word uh, for links. So this is different than just text looking good. This is functionality. So some tags are just about text looking good. Some special tags, um, in this case the anchor tag, is going to have some more complexity. So that at its core, that's kind of the mental model I want you to have for HTML. Um, and that's the one time we're ever going to use Notepad. Uh, because if we had to, let's change this back to Hello World, right? And save it. And now I want to show you something kind of interesting. So the browser received this text. But if we check it out in our uh, developer tools, Chrome went ahead and guessed at the tags we meant to use. And this is where HTML is so strange in the land of, uh, I, I don't know if I should call it a programming language, it's not, but in that kind of land, in the, in the land of coding, it's so loose. It will, you can screw up in unimaginable ways or imaginable ways, and it will just guess at what you want. No other coding language does that. Um, Python, JavaScript, uh, whatever. They, they just, they, you get an error and then your, your, app, your application crashes, right? So HTML is so bizarre that it's designed this way. Um, but anyway, that's what, so Chrome took that and said, this is what you must have meant. It surrounded our text, hello world, in a body tag. So let's recreate this, but using VS Code and not making Chrome do the work, the guesswork, actually uh, doing this the proper, the proper way. And then we'll use the boilerplate that I think Renata was talking about. Uh, but let me pause there. What questions do you have? on kind of the most basic idea of HTML. I don't have any questions on the HTML specifically, but uh, what is boilerplate? Is that like another application that we're running, like VS Code or? I'm no, that's just a term for, for language that's so standard okay. Okay. that uh, you reuse it constantly. Okay. Okay, so. I think I can close this for a second. And then let's go ahead. I think I can close this and this. And then let's go ahead and everybody downloaded VS Code, right? So let's go ahead and use VS Code. And let's open a new, so our objective, remember, is to just get this Hello World website. That's our objective. So in VS Code, I'm going to make a new folder. So you have to decide hey, where, question? Am I, supposed to, am I supposed to have VS Code open on my own system right now, or am I just watching you right now? Like, that brings up a, another good point. I recommend getting a second monitor if you can. I think on Amazon, it's like 
pretty cheap, pretty reasonable. Um, I think it'll make this whole boot camp uh, more valuable. Um, but that's up to you. So you don't. So you don't have to. What, whatever works the best for you. If if just absorbing me watching is the best, then do that. If following along is the best, then then do that. Um, yeah, you, you know what works the best for your situation. But I think two monitors is is definitely recommended um, for the course. Uh, I'm tempted to actually try to get three, uh, but yeah. Okay, so you have to decide where you want to save your code for this course. Um, I'm not going to tell you where to do that, wherever is convenient. Uh, I just have something called code and documents here. Um, so here I'm going to create a new folder just called lecture. And today you'll probably create a new folder called like day one it would be great. Um, but anyway, mine will be called lecture and then I'll open this up in VS code. And then here I have an empty folder. So I'm going to make a new file, um, called index.html. And then here's the boilerplate we were talking about. If you just type HTML in VS Code, you can choose five, which I believe is still the newest version. Press tab, and then we get all this nice boilerplate uh, for free. So now our objective uh, is almost complete. I can save this file and I can open this if I find it. So documents, code, lecture, index.html. And I can open it in Chrome. But what do we see? We don't see hello world, right? So uh, Ronald, how do we get hello world nice and big on the screen, as big as possible? What tag can we use? Um, thinking like H1. Yeah, so H1, we have our heading, our biggest one. Um, and we'll say, hello world, right? Mm -hmm. I save that and nothing happened though. Why did nothing happen? What do you think, Ronald? Um... Why? Yeah, Renata. I, I, uh, not a, yeah, not not a live server. server, maybe? Not a yeah, live server? We didn't click refresh right. on Chrome. So now it shows up because we clicked refresh. Uh, this would be annoying if you had to click refresh constantly when you're developing, right? So to help us out, we have an option that I asked you to install called live server. And after you install it, if you right click on your HTML file and say open with live server, um, did this open up? Oh no, there we go. Now, when we make changes and press save, automatically they, uh, the browser refreshes. So really nice feature uh, for when you're coding. So yeah, there's two... two um, Extensions you're going to install, kind of supercharge VS Code, uh, Live Server, and Prettier. So the other one, every time I press save, do you notice how my, my code shifts? That's because of Prettier. It's formatting my code. So this is this extension right here, Prettier. And I'm going to insist that everyone use these two extensions. Because it just makes it does that automatically for you. It does, but you need to, to to do a little setup. So after you install it, you have to go to um, settings. So file preferences settings. You have to search for the keyword save, and you have to make sure this box is checked. Format on save, and don't. Panic, I can show you this a million times uh, as you need. And 
And then there's actually another step. It's a little annoying. You probably have to click this bell icon and it'll say configure which formatter you want to use. And then you click on prettier. I can't do it because I already have it done, I think. Oh, right there. If I say format document with and you want to click prettier. So that VS Code knows every time I press save, I want prettier to format my document. You know it's working when you can make it ugly and you press save and it formats it. And this is so beautiful too because you not only know it's it looks very readable, I can just come into your, your breakout room and immediately know what's going on, um, but you know if you have any syntax errors because it won't format, I don't believe, if you have an error. So see that? It's red and it showed up red here and it didn't adjust. So that is something right off the gate um, you're going to have to do if you don't have it already. Install Prettier and make sure it's working. Any questions on that? So just Prettier and Live Server, two extensions uh, along with VS Code. Okay, uh, let's, um, well, let's talk about, uh, let's talk about HTML in a little more detail, right? So we wrote this H1, hello world. And let's break this down just a little bit. Um, what is this entire piece called? What is the name? So we're gonna do semantics now, this technical communication. So what is this entire piece called? Um, One more time. Adam. I, I didn't catch it. Sorry, header. Uh, it is a header tag, but, but um, what I'm looking for is, and this is referred to as an element. So this would, this piece by itself, this H1 is going to be known as an element. Um, can I? Usually it shows me. Oh, there we go. Uh, I want to. Can I underline this? Uh, I don't know. I guess not. Anyway. Okay. So this the whole piece is known as an element. And then this. Uh, first tag is known as the opening tag. And likewise, the closing tag is known as the closing tag. And then in the middle is the content. That hello world is our text content. So this is how you describe this HTML element. The H1 part of it would be referred to as a, a, a tag. So the tag is an H1. Some elements obviously have children that are elements themselves. So Hera, can you tell me one element on the screen right now from this code that has a child? Yeah, so the body's uh, the parent of the child H1 element. The body element has a child H1 element. Exactly. Yeah. Um, also, we should touch on the difference between head and body. Head is uh, commonly described as the information, the meta information that describes a website but doesn't show up. Uh, the exception to that is kind of the title tag. Does anyone know what the title tag does? It's pretty cool, actually. 
it has the title on the tab of your site. Yeah, so right here where it says document, I can change this to day one. And now when your user has this tab open, it says day one. Um, this is for encoding and this is for mobile stuff. Uh, this is so standard these days that I don't, I'm not even sure you need it anymore, especially if your user is using Chrome, but it doesn't hurt to keep. Um, so that's just some nomenclature for HTML. Nothing too serious, but uh, just some, some technical stuff. Um, and then what I really like to see, uh, this, this, is, this isn't a, a, a triangle, it's an angle bracket. Um, so yeah, that, 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 that symbol is going to be referred to as an angle bracket left and right. Um, okay. So let's expand, let's greatly expand our objectives here. So I'm going to get rid of our hello world website and I'm going to say actually that I want a website where um, the name of our course, uh, we have a title, HMH, HMH Web One's Favorites. So that I want all big. Um, and then a little bit smaller, but still kind of big. I want our uh, favorite books. So uh, whatever they happen to be. Um, our favorite video games. And our favorite movies. And these will really be a list of things. I didn't know how to make, how do I make that dot? I don't know how to make that dot. Um, I don't even know if, that, if that's an option on a keyboard. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, these are, these are lists. Um, so this is our our objective. Yeah. Kind of simple, right? Um, I'm going to add to this one. Uh, well, no, let's start here and then we'll, we'll, we'll add complexity as we go. Let's start really simple. So uh, you guys are going to build this, right? I I'm not. So how do we get this really big header? Let me delete this hello world because we're starting fresh. So our first objective is just to get this header. What do you think, uh, Lizzie? How do we get this one to show up on our day one website? Sorry, I'm thinking. So uh, yeah, do you remember the tag to make text appear very big? Yeah, sorry, no. Okay, no worries. Uh, Victor? Uh, H1? Yeah, awesome. Um, so I'm going to do an H1 and paste in uh, Web1's favorites, and then we see it all nice and big right there. So if we didn't have the H1, it would still show up just small. So that's all the H1 is doing. Um, so now I want the uh, books, but I want it a little bit smaller, but still kind of big. How can I get it, uh, Monica, the word books to show up? You create another, like an H2 tag? Yeah, awesome. So I'm going to do an H2 because I want it big, but not quite as big. I'm going to do books. Um, and then that'll show up, right? But then here, now things get a, a little bit complicated. Not, not really, but some more than what we've done. Um, how do I get a list? 
to show up. I want an unordered list to show up. You can use the tag. U L. U L, I think. Yeah, very nice. And sorry, sorry. How do you pronounce your name? Cat? Is it Cat's? Uh, yeah, guess the list. Okay. Yes. Um, if you stepped away to use the bathroom or something, that that's fine. But but normally the the webcam is required the whole time. Uh, okay. So if you can turn that one on. Um, okay. So we're gonna do an unordered list, right, for our books, and then um, Ryan, did you have a favorite book? Put you on the spot. Sorry, Great Gatsby. Great Gatsby. Um, so how do we get Great Gatsby to show up as a list item on our website here? The L-I tag. Yeah, beautiful. So we have Great Gatsby. Um, okay, very nice. Uh, so that's books. Let's do video games next. Or actually, we, we can do another book. So I'm going to copy and paste this tag. And uh, Roman, do you have a favorite book? Um, uh, Celestine Prophecy. One more time? Um, the Celestine Prophecy. I heard proxy. I'm not getting the first word. <laughs> um, Celestine. Celestine? Prophecy. Celestine? Like with the C. Oh, gotcha. Prophecy. Prophecy, got it. Sorry, is my mic not working? No, my brain's not working. Um, or I've never pronounced that that uh, word um, ever in my life. Uh, okay, awesome. Whoops. And uh, Kevin, favorite book? Uh, the Bible. Okay, very nice. All right, so there's our books. And now I want to do... Um, uh, video games. So I want the same thing, but for video games. How can I get it? How can I get the word, the title, first of all, video games? Uh, do you pronounce it gang? Gang? Uh, sorry. Um, yeah. Uh, so just like I have do... books, I want video games yeah. to show up. We can do tag eight two again. Okay. Yeah. Very nice. And what's, do you play video games, Diang? Uh, uh, sorry, I'm not. Maybe it's snack? Yeah. No, that's fine. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Sydney, do you, are you a gamer? <laughs> Animal Crossing. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's legit. Um, and David, what's your favorite video game? Final Fantasy. Um, and Alexander? Uh, probably Call of Duty Warzone. I'm a Battle Royale guy. <laughs> Very nice. All right. So books, video games. Um, so, uh, I'm not going to do the rest because it's going to get a little repetitive. I think for the first one, Great Gatsby, I now want... I want um, a picture to appear right below here. So I want a picture of the Great Gatsby. So I'm going to just search for an image. and try to get a clean one that I can download locally to my folder here of lecture. Um, I'm gonna shorten this name. Uh, okay, so now we, we have our first element with some functionality, 
right? So does anyone know how I can get this image of The Great Gatsby to appear right below here, this LI tag? Uh, yeah, an image element with the right yeah. source to it. Um, so how do I... Okay, so we have a couple of new things going on here. So let's talk about this. So if I save this, nothing happens right away, but but let's 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 dissect this a bit because it's it's new. So we have our first kind of weird element, right? First off, what do we notice is missing about this element? What is missing? Um uh Kevin? The closing tag. Yeah, no closing tag. Because an image uh, tag or element, I guess I should say, never has a child. So there's no reason for opening and closing because there's nothing ever in the middle. So this is referred to as a void element is another name. Um, so it's a little bit special in that regard. It's also special because we're not decorating text anymore. It, it has some weird functionality. We're displaying an image. Um, there's a, actually, there's also something very unusual about this element compared to the other ones. What, what, what else do we notice that's unusual? Uh, Sydney, what do you notice? I, I couldn't find my mouse. Um, just that you have to, what's different? Like you have to put in the source or? Yeah, yeah. We, on none of, on everything we've written so far, there's none of these weird extra words in this tag, right? In our H1, there's none of this. So what's the name for these, Sydney? What do we call these? Attributes. Yeah, so we have our first um, attributes. So these are going to be attributes are going to be made up of um, names and values. So the attribute name is source and the value is an empty string and same with alt. And these attributes uh, are just going to give extra info to the tag, to the element. Do a lot of different things um, in different contexts. Uh, but that's kind of the, the nomenclature of how we call that. So those are attributes. So a lot new stuff going on with just this one tag. But it turns out this tag actually requires one of these attributes. So do, we, do you know which one is required, um, David, for this image element? The uh, source is required. Yeah. So we have to tell it the 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 source of our image and in this situation do you have a guess at how we would point it to that gatsby picture we downloaded uh i would say that you just copy the link in there wherever the location of the source file is yeah because we're in the same directory we actually have the advantage that we can write dot slash and dot slash in more than HTML in, in many languages means current directory. So here we're using what's referred to as a relative path. Uh, so we're saying it's this, this picture can be found in the current directory. And then VS Code is being very helpful, right? It's showing us that it can auto suggest where to grab it. So I'm going to use that right there. Um, and then it shows up. So what is this alt? Uh, this alt is for accessibility reasons. Um, if uh, someone can't see a website they, and they have a screen reader on, it will tell them, describe to them what it is. So here we have a picture of Gatsby. Yeah. This is also useful um, for SEO purposes, for Google. Just nice to have. Yeah. If, if a website doesn't load the images in time, it'll just say what the picture is. 
Um, all right, let me, I've been talking a while. What, what questions are there on this kind of weird tag, this image tag? Just a quick question on something else. Uh -huh. Sex. Um, I was initially told not to include like the image of, or like start as the alt text about that because the screen reader reads that it is an image. Is there a, a rule that like we have to follow with that, or is writing the picture of okay? The screen reader reads what? That it is an image, like it already announces that it's an image, I guess. Oh yeah, no, you're you're completely right. I, I it's probably uh, redundant to say picture. Yeah, a hundred percent. Thank you. Um, yeah, my accessibility <laughs> readiness is definitely not where it should be. Uh, Mac, Mac, yeah. Can you, can you talk about um, <clears throat> how would the SRC look if it was uh, if you're referencing like another image on a different page, like it's yeah, something that's, that's not on your screen? That's such a good also, question. If it's in a file that's different than your current file. Yeah, so we have two different options. We have a relative path, and then we can point it to somewhere that exists already on the internet. So let's do that uh, second one, right? And then maybe we'll put it in a different folder, like David was saying. So if I didn't want to download this locally, and I just wanted to find it on the internet, I can certainly do that um, just by copying the address where it exists. This might get very ugly, but we can try it. Oh, no, this ended up being fine. And there it works perfectly as, as well. But now we don't have control of it. It's not local to our development environment. It's it's on AWS, most likely. Um, but you have those two different options for the source image. And then what David was saying he also wanted to see is it's going to be very common that you have a folder like images uh, and maybe you put Gatsby in there just for organization. And now I'll turn it back to David. How do you think we can successfully point it to that image now that it's in that folder? What's your guess? Well, I know the path will change. So maybe um, <clears throat> if you just do forward slash IMGS. Yeah, so we VS Code is really helping us out. We can see, we can use the auto suggestion. So I'll do that. And then I'll do Gatsby.jpg. Um, I'm actually always someone who puts dot, but I'm noticing that dot, that slash will work as well. Uh, so both of those options will work. Um, I prefer dot slash though. It's more universal, but both of them will, will work apparently. I have a question. Yeah. Um, can you talk about, um, well, I think with modern browsers and stuff uh, or HTML, we don't actually necessarily need that, I guess, closing forward slash at the end of the image, but when I use React, you know, since you need to include that kind of like closing angle uh, slash. Yeah. I don't need to write for regular standard HTML. Um, so for void elements, uh, sorry, go ahead. No, 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 it's a different topic, so yeah. We'll okay, yeah, let's, let's close this one then. So for void elements, you have that option, but you'll notice prettier is automatically deciding what's best for me, which is great. Let it do its thing. Um, and it's making the decision that you, it, it just wants it. So let Prettier do its thing in that case. Okay, yeah. I think no it's one, best to like... No one is ever going to have a strong opinion. <laughs> I mean, let, message me on LinkedIn when you when you get your first job. But I, I've never, yeah, I've never heard anyone with a strong opinion on whether Void Elements has this uh, slash or not. I think it looks better because it lets you know clearly like nothing else is going on after this. So. Okay. Um, and then I just, I always know there's like some funky thing that goes on with images and that it's like this thing because it's like a void element or, 
and that it like kind of, I guess once it renders or processes like dimensions, it kind of like goes into like another element tag. So I'm always like wondering like, is it an inline element or a block level element? And then that's why you have like these issues. It's block, but that just... concept we're not going to touch on today. That's going to be styling and CSS. Um, but I'm pretty okay. sure image is is block. Um, I hope so. I could be wrong about that, but we'll we'll we'll, we'll definitely explore that tomorrow. Um, okay. Other questions? And ju and just to note, and if anyone's in pain right now, I never go over an hour. Today is going to be the one exception just because it's day one. So my lectures never go over an hour. I have like a hard rule on that. But today, obviously, I am going over. Uh, other questions or next tag? Okay, so the one final tag I want to cover, I, th I think, uh, I want this to when I click on it, I want Great Gatsby to be clickable and it take me to the Wikipedia page. So I want to be able to click on this and take me to the Wikipedia page for Great Gatsby. Who can help me out brainstorming how I can do that for my website? I think put the link. So we want to make a link, but how do we make a link? What tag do we use? Anchor tag. Yeah, so confusingly, it's not called link tag. It's called anchor tag. And here, what do we call this, this extra information, um, Rodrigo? What do we refer to this as? Attribute. Yeah, so we have an att a required attribute called href for hyper-reference, and we have to point where we want Chrome to take you when the user clicks. So here, I'm just going to copy and paste this website. And then, is this a void element or a non-void element, uh, Francis? What do you think? Um, non-void? Yeah, because of why? It has the ending. The it has the ending, and we're also going to put child content. And what should what would make sense in this case for that child content to be? Because um, right now sure. we don't see anything, but we want the words Great Gatsby to show up. So what should go inside, inside here? The L I. Oh, we could do an AI, but we'll, we'll keep it simple and just do Great Gatsby. Okay. So now we have a link. And when we click it, um, we go to the Wikipedia page. So this is one of those special elements that's doing way more than just styling some text. It's, it's as if a ghost is typing into a user's browser and pressing enter and taking you somewhere new. Um, yeah. It's obviously a very fundamental part of HTML too because uh, this is the, hyper, the hypertext part. Hey Max, I noticed you removed the list item to do that. Um, <clears throat> how would you do it if you wanted to keep the list item? Um, so, do you have a guess for instead of the words Great Gatsby, what I could put? Because this accepts child elements. So if I wanted to show up as a list item, how could I possibly do that? Just use um, a, a nested tag. List yeah, item. yeah. So we can nest anything we want. And the cool thing is we can even nest the image itself. So we can make the image clickable by doing what? What do you think, um, Daniel, Lyra? How can we make this image clickable? Um, instead of uh, putting the li tag in between the, um, the anchor tag, you would put the image tag in there. Yeah, instead of or in addition to, for sure. And now all these are clickable, which from a user's perspective actually makes sense, right? It should be clickable probably. 
I do have a question uh, with the pre-work that we did. Um, I noticed that it, is it best practice to have the LI tag uh, nested inside the anchor tag or would you typically, like if you're, if you're making a list item clickable, do you want to put the LI within the anchor tag or do you want to just put the words inside the LI inside the anchor tag? Because when I was doing the work, it gave me an error when I tried wrapping the whole thing around it mm -hmm. uh, but i think it was just part of the the way the curriculum wanted me to do yeah. it you know but is it best practice to do it one way or the other that's not a best practice situation that's going to be a what you want it to look like situation totally dependent on how just okay. what do you want to be clickable and how so do you want it to look okay so it's just up to like okay so in this situation like we have a lot of options right we can make the words clickable we can make the image clickable we can make what we can do whatever we want so yeah um i think that's all i wanted to cover did anyone have any additional tags they had questions on div is going to be very important but more important tomorrow really <laughs> Okay, uh, so it's gonna be a workshop time. So I think we already took a look at the workshop, right? But we'll look again. So we have this intro to HT, oh, definitely another topic I need to hit with you guys. So when you, uh, when you submit for the end of the day, you have to give me a deployed website. This is not accessible to any of you guys right now. You can't access this, it's running locally. I want anyone in the world to be able to access it. So we're going to use Netlify. You're gonna create a, a login for Netlify. Um, you're gonna uh, go here to just drag and drop. You're gonna find where your code lives and this is important. Specifically, you need the directory that contains an index.html file. This is going to be very important, okay? The directory that contains your index.html file. Then all you do is drag it and drop it over to Netlify. Hopefully our image works. Um, and then you wait for it to do its thing. I guess it worked. And there we go. So now we this link you literally could use, uh, any one of you can access and see the amazing website we put together. And then this is the link you will submit to me right here. After submitting it, double check that it works because I'm not, and this applies to the projects where it actually is worth 10 points. I'm never going to message you saying you have a broken link. You're, you're just going to unfortunately get a zero for the project. Double check that your links work. What questions are there on that? Uh, Max, just really quick. Um, you were saying that those people on the West Coast uh, should put their Canvas server to West Coast time or move their Canvas server to East Coast time to your time, the same. your my, time, my wherever time. you are. So yeah, so West Coast time because Canvas is smart enough, I hope, let me know if this is incorrect, uh, to take my time and like convert it to your time as long as your time is, is set correctly in Canvas. For my time, it's due at 11.59 tonight. I don't know how that will translate to you. We'll see what Canvas does. Great question, though. Other questions? Um, I know you said if the link doesn't work, then you'll just get an automatic zero. Um, are yes. you able to, like, resubmit? No. There's no resubmissions for any project for any assignment. It's pretty strict, I know. But there's just – it's too many people – uh, there's just one of me, unfortunately. I don't have um, two TAs like I've sometimes had. Uh, so just double check your is links. This, is this an individual assignment or is this a breakout group assignment? 
so trying to understand. So every every project is going to be submitted individually, but I really do want you when you're stuck to work together and to even work together a lot when you're not stuck. The more communication with your group, the better. But at the end of the day, everybody is submitting an individual assignment. And today it, it actually wouldn't make sense. What's the chances that you both have the same favorite, you know, anime or movie or book that you want to build? Um, yeah. So work. So we're, we're about to go into breakout rooms. Cameras stay on. And again, there's a few cameras off right now. I'm, I'm going to be strict about this. Unfortunately, if it becomes a pattern, you, you really need your camera on the entire time or you're, you're, you're just not going to be able to participate in the, in the course. Um, cause I, I want you guys to form connections with each other and you just need to be able to see each other. I know it's a little bit uncomfortable. Uh, so the breakout rooms that you're going to right now, you'll be with two other people, work together as much as possible, s deploy, submit individually. Don't leave. At the end of the day, we're all coming back together. Uh, 15 minutes before the end of class, my time, it'll be 4.45 about. Um, we're going to come and share your code. You guys are going to describe and, and display what you built. So... Um, Practice screen sharing at least once when you're in your breakout rooms together because I'm going to ask you to do that when we're in together as a group. And with that being said, be cognizant that you're going to be screen sharing with all your classmates. So, yeah. Um, be yeah uh, so I'm unfamiliar with breakout rooms. So when we go into a breakout room, it's just me and a couple other people are the only ones yeah. I can see. And then, yes. uh, and then you're going to hop in there at some point or is there a count, uh, like a timer countdown or what? what There's going to be like, uh, 15 different rooms. Um, you'll be in a room with three other people. All you'll see is each other. But if you want to switch to a room, you do have that option. Um, so if you get kicked out, which is common, just come back to the room Click on the breakout rooms. It doesn't exist yet. It will. Click on the breakout room tabs in Zoom and go back to your room. Remember, when you get stuck, you ask for a question in the main Discord channel. Help, please. And I, um, I'll actually have you. I'll be in room one and I'll have you come to me. Most likely. Um, so you'll come to me and then I'll help you and then you'll go back to your breakout room. It, it, it really is intuitive once you see it. It's probably harder to explain. And I'll be here the entire time if you have questions. And if you go into the wrong room, don't worry. Like, it's obviously the first day. Like, yeah, uh, we can be very casual about this process. Uh, Renata? So we're just doing the build a fan, right? Like, that's what we're working on for projects. It's the entire day, yeah. Um, I realize it might I be... Think, I think Go ahead. <laughs> I think I can get it done in 10 minutes. Like, as, right, uh, right. So, yeah. Yeah, day one, purposely, I, I wanted to do pretty simple. Um, with that being said, I can open up day two pre-work early, which is intense. Uh, so for people who um, finish in 10 minutes, you can get started on day two pre-work. But then also... There's really never a time you're you're not going to have work because again there's that course pre-work which you can start going through concurrently with the course which is great and I can't recommend enough. And then on top of that you can style every website we built. So you can spend the next month making this website look as good as possible. It sounds like you already have some experience with that. So there's never a time <laughs> there's really no excuse to ever not have something to do for the next 12 weeks uh, uh, that you're awake. So. Can we also deploy if we know Git? So deploy Git via yes. Netlify? Yes, yes, okay. absolutely. That's the preferred probably way to do it. Um, I think we're good on that. Are we ready for breakout rooms? And again, if you have... <laughs> Some of you look stressed out. You'll totally get it, I promise. And if you don't, I'm here um, to, to help you out. All right. 
Give me a second to create the rooms. I mean, it's going to be random every day. Uh, I think 15 should be enough. So let me do that. Oh, that'll be way more than enough because we're, we're doing three. So I'll actually do 10 maybe. Um, yeah, that should be enough. Any questions while I'm doing this? So remember, VS Code, you need Prettier, you need Live Server. You need to make sure your name matches in Discord. Those are the things I definitely need from you. Um, Max, did you say that it, uh, this project would be due at 5 p.m. your time? No, my time, it's 11.59 p.m. Okay, so midnight, real time. Okay. Yeah. All right, good luck. Uh, I'm here if you need help. Um, so, uh, there in the breakout rooms, if you would like to join the next cohort, October, uh, 30th, the website link is going to be, uh, right below in the video description.